So two weeks ago, the PHP Git server has been quote unquote hacked and two nasty malicious commits have been made to the PHP source code. And it's a, essentially it's a rootkit, uh, not really a rootkit, it's just a remote code execution uh, backdoor installed in the PHP source code. Thank God they found it after two hours. Otherwise, it had been a disaster. Imagine this nasty uh, root uh, remote code execution get in the wild and suddenly a free backdoor all of a sudden to every PHP server will be made. All right, so uh, the PHP maintainers have responded because previously we didn't know what caused it, what was the source of the hack. PHP maintainers have responded with detailed analysis. So how about we jump into it and discuss? So let's read this blurb from Nikita Popov, one of the maintainers of the PHP source code. And um, how about we discuss? Hi, everyone. I would like to provide an update regarding the get.php.net security incident. To briefly summarize the most important information. Uh, first bullet. We no longer believe the git.php.net server has been compromised. Okay, so th that's that's a relief, but what, what's, what's going on? However, it is possible that the master.php.net user database leaked. Okay, so that's kind of worse if you think about it. Uh, master.php.net has been migrated to a new system uh, to a new system main.php.net all php.net passwords have been reset go to blah 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 to reset your password so if you're one of the php maintainers you probably got this email so you have to reset your passwords essentially get.php.net and svn.php.net are both read only now but will remain available for the time being in order to to go on before we go on this this might have seemed confusing a little bit Git, essentially, it's a server, it's a free tool that developed by uh, Linus uh, Travel, the one who developed Linux. And uh, you can essentially build any kind of vehicle on top of Git. So one vehicle was SSH, where to authenticate, uh, you build Git, all the Git commands are through the SSH. How does that work? Well, you put, you create a public-private key pair, you put the public key on the server, so the public key, or your public key belong to the server, or, or, uh, your public key exists on the server, and then your private key, you keep it tucked in on your machine. And when you want to establish a connection through get, what will happen is you take your private key, sign some sort of a message, send it to the server, and the server will use your public key to decrypt that, because that's how asymmetric encryption works, and all of a sudden, we trust you. Simple, no password, nothing. The other approach is to use digest authentication through HTTPS, right? And, and, and to do that, you have to have some sort of a database, obviously, with a set of passwords that sits somewhere on the back end with an HTTP server, because, uh, hey, it's HTTPS, so you need some sort of a web server to serve you all this stuff. So that's another method of authentication, which is kind of, to be honest, it's not really recommended. But because like passwords, you have to remember your passwords and they are insecure, they can be hacked, you have to store them somewhere in the back end. What happened here is that the actual public key through SSH, which is the most exercised path through the PHP source code, that is fine. That has never been touched because they have all sort of a... Uh, Logging and monitoring was through this service that's called Ghetto Light. So they, they monitor this stuff. They've been looking at that stuff. But they completely forgot that they actually have an HTTPS-based authentication to the major source code, right? And that looks like that has been uh, essentially compromised. So let's read through this and then discuss. So Nikita continues. He says, something I was not aware of at off at the time is that get.php.net intentionally support pushing changes not only via SSH using the ghetto light infrastructure and public key cryptography but also via HTTPS. The latter did not use ghetto light. That, that explained that they didn't have any logs or any fingerprints of this two commits that have happened, right? And instead used get HTTP uh, backend behind Apache 2 digest authentication against the master.php.net user database. 
I'm not sure why password based authentication was supported in the first place, as it is much less secure than public key authentication. And then they go ahead and show the actual logs and everything that happened. The other thing that I did not mention here is like there are two pieces. Let's just go on. It's not only the HTTPS on top of Apache 2 that is the problem. Look, l let me read this and <laughs> let's discuss. But look at this. The master.php.net system, which is used for authentication and various management tasks, was running very old code and very old operating system and php version so some kind of vulnerability would not be terribly surprising we have made a number of changes to increase the security of the system right so they not only is there is an existing system it looks like it has been forgotten just another reason big repo repos like this shouldn't really need to manage uh, their own Git repo. That's my opinion. I think just like, I think that they mentioned the PHP maintainers. They mentioned this like you know what, this is not worth it. Let's move to GitHub. It's just like it's way better to outsource this responsibility to someone who's better handled to do this thing. While we focus on writing code, that's our main goal. I mean, curl have moved moved their stuff to to the to GitHub as well, and many other op open source major open source uh, software so that's only yeah i know people have their problems with microsoft but let's think about it it's just it's not worth it to maintain your own let's go let's go on it. okay what they did to increase the security of the system that they have master.php.net was migrated to a new system running php 8 and renamed to main.php.net, as we read earlier. Among other things, the new system supports TLS 1.2. <laughs> that made me laugh a little bit. <laughs> let, let me read this again for you, so, so you guys, if, in case you missed it. Among other things, the new system supports TLS 1.2. That means the old system actually didn't support TLS 1.2. It supports TLS 1.1 and 1.0, which we have discussed many times in this channel that they are just stop using them they are so easy to break and pretty much all browsers stopped connecting to backends that supports these tls 1.0 or 1.1 essentially all right especially if that's your preferred option right uh, sites like ssl labs will give you a lower score if you have those enabled to begin with because you uh, and uh uh, an SSL stripping attack or SSL downgrade attack can easily happen and downgrade a TLS 1.2 down to a TLS 1.1, which is not recommended as much. So that's bad. <laughs> Essentially, that's good, which means you should no longer see TLS version warning when accessing this site. So they were using, essentially, getting this warning, as we said, like with Firefox, uh, Chrome, they essentially stopped altogether, uh, allowing you to connect to backends that only support TS 1.0 and 1.1 and obviously SSL 3 and all that old stuff. The implementation has been moved towards using parameterized queries to be more confident that SQL injection cannot occur. Wow. All right. So they, 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 there's a lot of other stuff that they're trying to make guesses at what leaked the database. They didn't know. It's like they are assuming the database got leaked and they have all these, uh, by the way, uh, the passwords in the database, I didn't read that part, but they are using, they are storing the passwords as MD5. Passwords are now stored using bcrypt instead of MD5. And I talked about these different concepts in the channel. Check out this video. I talk about five ways you can store the passwords in the backend, from the less secure to the most secure by actually not storing them. Less secure is actually storing the plain text, then you move to salting, then bcrypt, then salt within password, and hashing, simple hash, all that stuff, right? Previously, passwords were stored in a format compatible with HTTP Digest authentication, essentially a plain MD5 hash. To support HTTP Digest, the, the Digest has to be MD5, apparently. I didn't know that. Which was required for HTTP authentication on git.php.net and svn.php.net. SVN is, I think, the the, the the previous um, version management, right? I never used it, but I, th I remember it was very popular, right? Git has essentially replaced SVN altogether. As Git, 
as git.php.net has been made read only as a result of this incident, we decided to make svn.php.net read only as well. And thus remove the need to store password in insecure formats. That's because of the HTTP digest. Only a small handful of PECL extensions were still using the SVN server and the SVN server is okay. Like they're saying that they, there are very few services that have been essentially affected by this. Guys. All right. So what do we learn from this? We learned that <laughs> I, I wouldn't manage my own Git server at all. <laughs> That's what I learned. Definitely. I'll definitely remain. Um, uh, I'll even host it on, on GitHub or GitLabs or uh, Bitbucket or anything, any service that takes care of security and management form because these are a very critical piece of infrastructure that to get right, you need a lot of resources. If you don't have the resources, if you have these resources, by all means, of course, you have to use them. But if you don't, it might be worth uh, investing in such service. Right? Just push all this stuff and don't worry about maintaining this and and uh, i don't see a point of sub even supporting https authentication when it comes of git uh, let me know guys if, if i'm wrong and if you, there is absolutely a use case where you don't you just can't use ssh and you need uh, https i mean all my jenkins job use public key uh cryptography to authenticate with my own git server at work at least the, the local git server that we have at work we always use a, pro, a public key encryption it's just easier right and just the, the prompt and remember okay what's the password all right guys uh, that's it for me today i'm gonna see you in the next one you guys stay awesome goodbye